guess it's now or never. How's it going, everyone? Hey, it's John Selway. How you doing? Another Selway Techno Saturday. Uh, looking at a plug-in today. A, a fairly new synth, right? There's been a, there was a little bit of internet hype about this plugin when it came out. And uh, I finally got around to taking a look at it. So that's what we're going to do today here on 343 TV. Our daily, almost daily live stream from uh, 343 Labs or Music Production School. As many of you know, I see familiar names. John H. Kingston III, Enigmatic Onion, William Mind Readers. Hi, Phil Benzen. Glad you had some time for this today. And uh, hello. Hey, Paul. Paul's, Paul Van Der Werf is a student of mine. William Mind Readers, I already said. But he put a smiley face in the chat, so I said his name again. And hi, Tori. Yes, good morning, techno warriors. I think we can be techno warriors or we can be techno friends. <laughs> Speaking of techno friends, uh, I have a very special guest next week that I'm really looking forward to having on. Uh, radioactive man, Keith Tenniswood. I am very much looking forward to having a kind of a hangout with him, talking about music and electro and music and electro. <laughs> I'm in a mood this this weekend, everybody. I guess uh, my mind. I, I think this happened to me last time uh, with with Jason Sostek with BPMF when we were talking about arranging electro. I started out the show just like totally in a daze, and it took me a, a moment to wake up. So th this is what's happening. And um, who else is in here? Hi, Hank. And CHDB Music. Hello, David Applegate. So today's really kind of an exploration. Um, I do this every now and then where I will look at a new instrument or plugin or whatever and just kind of explore and see what I like about it, what I can do with it. This is, you know, so I'm looking at Vital. Vital is a, uh, a new wavetable synth and you know there's a lot of good plugins out there that are really popular like serum uh pigments is a new one that's very powerful uh of course there's the perennial massive and then the newer massive x which are amazing and there's a lot of other i mean gosh i can't even think of them right now there, there's a whole list of like powerful modern synths out there that incorporate wavetable synthesis plus other types of synthesis um and, uh, you know, Vital looks, from what you can see, it's kind of behind me blurry here, but it looks really cool. The interface is good. The way it displays information, the modulation routing. Um, well, and of course, like the sound quality, like everything I've heard out of it sounds really good. It's very definitely in that realm of like modern, sharp, detailed kind of sound. And you could do almost anything with it. I think it's got a sample player in it, three oscillators, you know, wavetable. Um, and it does kind of some spectral stuff. So there's, I think one of the, my, one of my reasons for looking at this is like, what can this do? What kind of sounds and interesting textures can I get out of this that I don't get from what I already have? Right. So that's sort of one of the things that I'm exploring. And um, yeah. So Hadassah Davis is asking what exactly is vital. All right, let's switch to my other screen so you guys can see. Yeah, this is the, you know, the developer's Vital Audio. This is their page. This is the only thing. I think it's one programmer, if I get it right. One guy doing this, and he's doing an amazing job. Warp waves in new ways. So this spectral oscillator warping, I think. You know, Live's Wavetable, Serum, Massive Massive X, Pigments, they all have ways of taking, you know, doing complex modulation to the waveforms to create new, you know, textures. And essentially, they're almost always like taking a, a waveform and make, adding to it or making it brighter, but not always, right? So we should listen to that, right? So he's got these, these very interesting spectral warping oscillators, three of them. And then we have... Um, it has the ability, I'm not going to demonstrate this today because I'm just using the free version, which is a little bit more limited. But 
even though for a free plugin, it's one of the best free synths ever, I think. I would easily say that. And uh, William Mind Readers mentions Phase Plant. Yes, that is another new, very powerful synth for sure. I would say Phase Plant's even, a, a, it's, I think it, could, it can do more layering and more combinations. It's a little bit more modular in a way, the way you can uh, add or, you know, you can build it from the ground up from nothing. Whereas, you know, Vital has a more sort of a preset flow aside from the modulation routing, which is seemingly li limitless so far. I haven't run into a limit yet. But anyway, yeah, so like many other wavetable synths, you can create your own wavetables by importing audio. It even has a, a text-to-speech wavetable generator. So you can type in words and then it'll do a text-to-speech synthesis and turn that into a wavetable. There's a preset in here. Um, you know, there, there are already a bunch of tutorials and videos about Vital online um, that can show some of the deeper stuff with the wavetable editing and creating your own. Um, I'm just kind of sticking to seeing what we can do with the free version. Uh, Another reason I'm doing this is almost all of the videos out there on YouTube already about this plugin, it's different styles of music than what I'm into. It's a little more EDM heavy, you know, wompy bass lines and trance leads and stuff like that, or maybe some kind of soundtrack stuff. I like the sort of more cinematic sounds actually. So I wanted to at least do something. So we have a video here where we're doing a different style of music with this plugin because these types of synths tend to be kind of looked at by you know, in, in more in those other genres, I, I would say. So anyway, yeah, you can also see everything. You know, there's this, the visualization is amazing in this. It looks really cool and it's very detailed. And then, yeah, modulate anything. That's another, like, you can just click on a modulator and drag it onto almost anything in the interface. So all of these things add up to, like, a really interesting, especially free, you know, a really cool synth. So yeah, there's a subscription model, five bucks a month. There's the free basic version, which I'm using, and then they've got some other packages. But I don't see why anyone would do Plus or Pro really because unless you're against subscription models because the subscription gives you like the most. All right. Let's acknowledge the chat again and see who else is in here. Future Man, Cool Cat. Energy. Oh, those are those aren't. That's not a person. Those are okay. It's mod scientists. This is, we got the the restream bot going on now, so it's you can if someone's on Twitch, we can see their comments in YouTube and vice versa. So I I forget sometimes where I have to look to see. So hey, mod scientist, how's it going? Simple Sam is back. Nice to see you again. And uh, William Mind Reader says sounds like the modifiers of Argonate. Yeah, Argonate is a very, that's a wavetable hardware synth, right? Haven't really looked at that yet. I need to get some new hardware to play with. So this is kind of a, I'll say it again, we're exploring today. I don't have like a big song and dance show for you all set up ahead of time. I did start doing a sketch though. Um, so I have something to start with. So you guys can kind of see what I've done with it already. And I, I was feeling, I don't know, maybe it's my mood, but I started, I, I originally intended to do something heavier and more powerful and it ended up being like kind of hypnotic and deep and dark and trippy. And I think that's okay too, right? We could also try to, we could try to take it that way. We could see how intense we can get with it. So, uh, all right. I believe before we dive in, I believe we have a uh, a giveaway as usual. We have, and you know, this is great because we all know Ableton Live 11 has just come out. So it's very good timing. If you were interested in, you know, upgrading or, you know, getting into live for the first time, even, you know, a $200 Ableton certificate could go a long way towards meeting your goal. So uh, there'll be a link in here. If you haven't already entered the contest, um, you know, sign up and we will be announcing the winner towards the end of the show, like in the last 15 minutes or so. And uh, I don't know. Let's listen to some 
trippy sounds. So my idea for this, this is like, this is one patch, you know, for a hypnotic techno kind of a groove. And I'm, I'm approaching it where each oscillator is a different musical layer that I can bring in and out. You know, either in performing like in real time with knobs or using automation. All right. So, you know, so far just kick drum and synth. But just this one instance of vital is going to be making a lot of sound. I may not even want to add too much more to this besides drums and maybe a little... I don't know, ear candy here and there. We'll see. So yeah, everything you hear, let's get rid of the kick drum. Everything we're hearing is just one of these oscillators. The effects are built in as well. The effects in this thing sound great. Just that's some reverb. And I'm using oscillator three as just kind of the bass layer, right? We've got two filters. Right now, oscillator three is only going into filter one. It's a low pass and it's being modulated by envelope two. So if you look at this, it always shows you, you know, with a little circle with an amount, sort of like a pie chart kind of a view of how much modulation is being sent to a particular parameter. So yeah, there's the filter one cut off, cut off modulation amount there. That actually just sounded really cool. I could actually modulate that amount with something else. That's sort of where I was at with the sound. I'm starting to add macros. So macro one's doing something, but it's not audible because it's on a different oscillator. But let's make macro three. Come on here. Give me that. So if you hover over there, there's a little sort of cross thing. I'm just going to click and drag that over. And there's a little dot in the middle of that modulation amount. And now that macro is controlling how much of modulation the envelope is sending to the filter frequency. So it's attenuating it. For those of you who do any modulation, uh, mo I'm sorry, modular stuff, you know, when you're attenuating a signal, that's what this is doing. You know, it's funny, another thing I w that got me started on making the sound, um, you know, I was in a conversation yesterday with uh, someone who, you know, did a performance, for, we did a 343 performance series, and he was talking about how, like, working with, you know, hardware and modular synths, like, he felt like he could do stuff that he could never do or he wouldn't do with software. And so I'm, what I'm, I'm kind of doing here is I'm thinking about more in that kind of modular slash hardware kind of workflow where you're using, you know, you're, you're being careful about your modulation routing and how your musical ideas are, you know, the modulation and how things are sequenced is as much about the music as the notes that you're playing in your DAW, right? So it's kind of having a, a modular mindset. There's no cables plugging in from one another, but because synths like this are so powerful, in terms of anything can modulate anything, you can start to approach that workflow. And, uh, you know, and I like it better because I honestly, I get, when I see a, uh, like spaghetti, like a nest of cables everywhere, I'm like, ah, my ADD, I just can't. <laughs> Having clear visuals like this with like, with color coding and everything, it makes it so much easier for, for my mind to be creative. Tori says exactly how I like to start my Sunday mornings. Well, <laughs> Or afternoons or evenings, depending on where we all are. Okay, so yeah, I see the chat. In the chat, there's the last chance to enter the week's, this week's giveaway for the $200 certificate. Definitely jump on that if you haven't already. All right. So yeah, I'm just doing something really simple here. By the way, and I've talked about this many times before, but this pattern that I... I'm the sequence. I just played these notes in, notes in. Literally, I opened up Ableton Live and play, randomly played seven notes without even thinking about it. 
and that is the melody. I did, this was not a like a a long composition process to come up with a few notes like this. And definitely for techno, when you want things to be kind of not too musical and you're concentrating more on rhythm and sound, like don't think too hard about the melody for especially for something that's sort of more inharmonic and droney and noisy, right? It doesn't matter as much. You can always tune the sound to fit the notes, if as it were, and make it sound cool regardless of what notes you're playing. That's one of the things I think that makes techno approachable for people to make really well with having little musical experience is you can just kind of, it sounds cool, feels cool, it's right. You know, you don't have to worry about the theory. All righty. So I just literally, you know, played those notes in. I did quantize it. And it's, um, it's polymetric. So it's not following the 4-4 exactly. It's like restarting every however many 16 notes. It's a pretty common trick you see with like step sequencing. All right, let's go back to vital. So that's the bass layer. And it's it already sounds good the way it is. It's just a filtered pulse wave, which is ex almost exactly what you'd get out of, um, you know, sub just subtractive synthesis. It's That's all that is, is subtractive synthesis. I'm not doing anything fancy with the, the wavetable yet. Right. But I did start look at, looking at these sort of morphing modulation effects, these spectral shaping possibilities. And um, now you can see that that looks really cool, right? We're sort of warp, we're moving, we're warping, we're skewing this time skew. We're changing that pulse wave into something else. Let's listen to it without the filter. Sounds really cool. So yeah, when the filter's on, you don't hear the detail so much, but that sounds amazing. So I kind of like, just for a solid kind of base layer, I liked it right about there. I don't know why, I just that's where I settled on it. I might modulate that still, but put the filter back on. And yeah, you can choose here which filter it's going to. So you can go to one or two or both, or straight to the effects with no filters or no effects. And that's pretty you know, you can do that kind of thing with serum and massive. You can choose whether you want it to be filtered or affected or not. All right. bunch of different types of filters and effects, right? This is another thing that's similar to Serum. You've got like a phaser and a comb filter. But these are other just sort of different character filter models. Dirty's a little distorted. Ladder sounds more like a Moog kind of low pass filter. Digital's going to be, well, digital. It's not adding harmonics to it. Um, not sure what the diode one is. I'm going to have to look at that. Foreman filter, doing vocal, uh, vowel type sounds. Comb filtering is basically what chorusing and flanging does. That sounds really aggressive. I actually kind of like that just for like a harder track. It's a little more industrial sounding with that comb filter on it. All right. But, and then there's a phaser. But let's just go back to Yeah, keep it there. 24 decibel low pass filter. And actually, you know, all of these filters are kind of morphing, so oh, low pass, band pass, high pass, variable state filters, I guess you call them. Not exactly morphing. You can saturate it with the drive, but I you kind of it warms it up, but it also sounds a little less resonant in the, in the bass when I do that, so I'm going to keep it lower. All right. I'm going to bring that out for a second. So I actually, that's not what I started with. The first thing I did was oscillator one. And 
I really liked what was happening with this particular wavetable, this harmonic series wavetable. Um, and as we, you know, move through the frames, the frames is the wavetable position. We're hearing different overtones. And they're moving around a lot because what I've got over here is this uh, is LFO one modulating this vocode spectral morph. All right. Now envelope one is doing the amplitude for the whole sound, and I really liked what happened when I brought the release up. Let's slow down the rate of the LFO. You can go all the way to uh, 128 seconds, which is just like really, really long. Cosmic J says, I love the multi-step LFOs in Vital and the ease of wavetable creation. Sounds like you've gotten a little deeper into this synth already. One of my favorite things about, well, I don't know if it works with every single parameter, but you can do stereo modulation. You can offset the left and the right phase with the LFOs on almost anything. And that's one of the things that's happening right here. So LFO one, let's make that zero. You know, so it's doing this vocode spectral morph. And you can hear as the LFO go goes up and down, we're hearing, it sounds like different notes being played, right? You know, because we're hearing these harmonics in, the, in this harmonic series uh, wavetable come out, and it sounds like I'm transposing the pitch, but that's the wave, that's, that's all the spectral morphing and the wavetable. And, you know, right now the, the, the left and right are in phase, so it's mono. But if I offset that, we're going to hear different different frequencies on the left and the right. And I just think that sounds amazing. And in the visual, it shows you that it, you're, you're seeing different points of modulation happening. Left and right. There's kind of like the blue dot and the green dot are left and right. Started to sound like Middle Eastern somehow <laughs> with that melody combined with these harmonics that shifting around. This is really trippy. I, I warned you, we're going deep today, just musically. What's up, Max? Is he here? He's here. Hopefully, you guys are getting everything sorted out for the for the pro session. That looked interesting today. I'm gonna go check it out after I'm done here. All right, so, you know, you can already hear there's so much to play with. I've got the bass layer. And then, you know, all this is coming from one sequence. I can play around with the amp envelope to be shorter or longer, more percussive or more dreamy. can move the wavetable around to create melodic variation or harmonic variation basically because they're harmonics and then I'm using this also modulating the spectral morph to create further variation and let's go over and turn those effects back on I think yeah just the reverb the reverb sounds really nice For stuff like this, I'll to give it kind of a drone in the background, I'll have like a super long reverb time. But then it's really filtered, right? So I'm not getting 
you know, that bass is going through there too, but I don't want the reverb to get all boomy with the low frequencies. So, you know, I've got the low cut. So I can have the less of the low frequencies going into the reverb. And then I've also got this filter in the reverb rolling off the lows so it doesn't get too muddy. And we could make it sound more diffuse by increasing the chorusing or more straight by reducing the chorusing. It's a little more crystalline without the modulation of the chorus. And it's with the smaller size, it's much brighter. All right. That's like just moving one knob. It's like a different section of the track. That's, that's great. Let's slow down the frequency of the... Yeah, if I slow the LFO down, you're hearing more individual pitches and if I go fast they start to get kind of well they're not that jumbled up there you go you can hear it sounds more bubbly that melody I never would have written that melody just the complexity of that came from the modulation that's definitely one of the things to learn making these kind of hypnotic techno, or I mean, not just, you know, it's not just hypnotic techno or deep dark techno, but having these sequences that evolve. It You don't have to go in and write all the notes. You come up with a simple rhythm or pattern and then use the modulation to create the complexity. And I mean, I, this was a, a definitely a happy accident. Like, I would, you know, usually when I'm playing around with wavetables, I'm like, all right, let's see what, okay, that sounds okay. And then as soon as I got, I didn't have the modulation set up yet, but you know, you, you check out wavetables and then you sweep through the wavetable position or the frame to hear the, the tonal variation in that wavetable. And right away it jumped out. I'm like, oh, I know what I could do. Cause I started hearing as I moved through this wavetable and playing around with this uh, vocode uh, spectrum morph is that it sounded like new melodic stuff was happening. So definitely, you know, making that connection from how the synthesis and the sound design relate to the composition with this kind of style of music. Got the unison detuning, which also sounds really cool. Going out of tune and then back in tune is something that I might modulate or control with a macro. All right. Can open up the filter. I mean, you know, that always works, right? Just making everything bigger and brighter. And that's just oscillator three going through filter two. Uh, actually, filter one is going is also going. I'm sorry, oscillator one is also going through filter two. Let's see what else I got going on, going on in here. So I have a, a a third layer. I'm I'm going all out of order here, but oscillator three is the more bass kind of layer. Oscillator one's the nice, clean, clear, melodic, trippy kind of layer. Oscillator two is like the dirt. So, and right now we're not hearing anything, really. Same wavetable. And I have um, the wave morph set to FM. So this is really good for doing FM synthesis as well. You, you can get similar tone. It's not full FM synthesis, but it gets you similar textures as you'd get out of an FM synth. And this is going to get modulated by oscillator one. All right, let's bring back that the reverb's a little intense. 
screen that mixed back towards the dry. All right, so it's already, it's got so much movement to it. You know, uh, the oscillator one is being modulated by the LFO. It's got the vocode on it. It's got that crazy stereo swirly thing that's going on because of the offset phase of the LFO. And then that is modulating oscillator two, right? So all of that detail, all of that stereo modulation and how each individual little like note that you hear has a different tone is in the FM. So it's really detailed and complex sounding, which I think is amazing. And it didn't, it wasn't that hard to get there. Let's get back into the chat here and say, let's see, Phil Benson says from someone just starting out, I love how easy you make all this look. Yeah, I, I realize that it, you know, I can slow it down and explain everything, but like making that connection in your head and like how it's like the decisions that you make. And when do you know it's right or it sounds good? There's a confidence there. And there's also like doing it enough times that you have the experience to know that, yes, that's going to work. I like how that sounds and that's going to work. Kind of just comes from practice. So, um, yeah. Tori asks, would you say a lot of your process and prompting happy accidents like you are not going in with a plan on these parameters, but tweaking them until it gets to where you like the sound um, I think, yeah, it's a workflow to do that. You don't always work that way. If, if I go into making music or a sound with a def definite idea in mind from the start, I'm probably going to rely less on happy accidents and more on specific sort of process. Um, but I, for me though, because for this style of music, especially that the synthesis and sound design is part of the composition is part of the discovery or the improvisation or whatever it is. So it's really important uh, to, to sort of use, to discover, you know, to put your, set up a system for yourself to make more happy accidents happen. And I guess, you know, the more you know about how synths work and sound design works and the more experience you have, the easier it is to set up the happy accident in a cool musical way. But don't let that stop you. Just turn knobs carefully until you do something cool. And then once you hear something cool, you say, aha, that's it. Let's do it. Let's just use this part. All right. All right, so the FM oscillator one amount is being also modulated by an envelope. Same envelope as this one, envelope two. so much to play with the sound already. Yeah, I can make a whole track out of just bringing these levels in and out. Playing with the filter. And you have to be careful because like there's so many variations like you might come across a really cool groove and then turn one knob and it's gone so definitely that's a good argument for just like recording everything so that you don't miss out on some of those things that you did of course with you know live like a range recording i could just capture all this as automation and then go back and edit i could record it to audio and then you know arrange edit the audio to make an arrangement Cosmic J says, save, then carry on. Yeah, that's right. So I find that I get lost when I'm playing and tweaking with sounds and I'll forget to save. Um, 
but yeah, like if you if you're really grooving and you're thinking, oh, this is really awesome, I love this, save it right then. And that way, if you mess it up, you can always go back to that previous version. Phil Benson is replying to Lie Society. I'm definitely starting to listen to music in a different way. The more I'm learning it takes a lot of time and practice. Absolutely. That's what it comes down to. None of this happens immediately. And the more you do, the more you can do. Practice, 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 like I tell my son about the violin. keep saying all right <laughs> i also have a noise layer this is just one of the preset noise samples in here and this is a nice feature that button right there randomizes the phase it randomizes the start position of the sample so if i turn that off it's just sticking in one spot at the very beginning. Which is, you know, it's more like you're playing a drum. But then I turn that on and you're hearing different parts of the sample, different elements, different tonal variations in the noise, which I really liked. And these are, you know, it's samples of noise. You can pitch it if you want. And I have that going through filter too. And the idea was originally was to have like a, a noise layer to put on top but then I ended up playing around with the notch filter and liking how it sounded with this kind of muffled yeah this this is a nice filter like having the notch and then having this sort of morphing between low pass and notch and high pass. I like filters like that. It's key tracking, right? So the filter is changing per note, gives each sort of note some separation. This is so trippy. All right, I'm dying for my hi hats. Something's coming to get me. Hmm. You know, I like having that reverb in there all the time, but sometimes it gets sort of too noisy. One thing I do wish I could do with this is uh, if I could choose, if I had more, uh, and maybe I just haven't learned how to do it yet, but more uh, ways to route the effects, like a, like buses. Like that's something I like about pigments. You've got two effects, buses and a send return. So you can have different parts of your sound with different effects. So like if I didn't want to put any of the reverb on the oscillator three, for example, or if I only, I also, I can't choose whether, uh, a filter has effects or not. So like if you're going into a filter, you're going into the effects. You can't kind of separate it out. Kind of 
Cosmic J says that's chewy filtering. The filters sound good. And then there's a lot of different filter models in here. So you can really dial in like to your taste. And, you know, Phil Benson says, amazing, that's all coming from one synth. Right. You don't need, for this kind of music, you don't necessarily need like 20 tracks going. You might just need a couple of drums and a couple of synths and a couple of effects and just interesting movement and texture. Exit says, don't stop, keep it going. Well, you know, I'm not kind of arranging today. I mean, I know if you want me to just tweak for the next 20 minutes <laughs> and just play around, I do, we should probably add another element here. Maybe I can like try to make another sound from scratch. If you guys have any suggestions about like what kind of sound to add to this, although I don't want to go too complex with layers. You know, it's already, there's so much going on with this one patch. Hi, Stuart McKay. How's it going up there? Mystic Moth says, love pigments. Yeah, pigments is good. All righty. I'm going to listen to this a little bit and think. We're a little bit, we're, we're, wow, time flies. I always say this. It feels like it's slow in the beginning. And then before I know it, I'm running out of time. Um, I think we're about to announce our winner. So I think if you haven't already joined in for the giveaway, it may be too late. Keep your eye out. We're going to be announcing very shortly. Yes, it's your last chance to enter the giveaway. I'll also remind those of you who are new, 343 Labs is a music production school. Uh, we have locations in New York and Berlin. We do online courses, in-person courses, private lessons. We've got a very active community in our Discord server. If you haven't checked that out yet, we've got links below. Check out our website to see what courses we have coming up. I do a synthesis and sound design for producers course. And I also teach Ableton Live production in general. And I do private lessons. So yeah, hit us up if you want to get serious. We can help. Uh, and yeah, go to the Discord. You know, you can meet other like-minded people, get feedback on your tracks. I don't know. My mind is still in this loop from this crazy hypnotic vibe I've got going on. Stuart McKay asks, do I ever add a constant vocal note throughout which is heavily sidechained to the kick? I don't know if there's a term. Well, I, I think I know what you're getting at. So, you know, getting into using samples and stuff like that, for sure, it can be interesting to use any number of kind of sample textures, whether it's a voice or some acoustic instrument or some weird noise or like your air conditioner or like, you know, if you want to create kind of an atmosphere, yeah, for sure. And in, in a way, it's kind of what this sample noise layer in. All right, I have it. It's more percussive because of the way it's modulated. It's just going. But let me get rid of the hi hat so we can and the kick so we can hear it. So I know that's not exactly like a voice with reverb on it, but it's it's a non musical or non you know harmonic texture. It's just sort of floating in there, mixed with the melodic stuff. It's like, it sounds too dry without the reverb. With the reverb, it's like a little bit much. You know what? Let's do this. I'm going to get, I'm going to do the dry wet with an envelope so that uh, it ducks it a little bit every time there's a note. Now, should we do the overall amplitude or should we do envelope two? All right, let's do the overall amplitude. No, let's do envelope two because I'm not going to be changing this one as much. All right, so we're going to, Drag that onto the mix and uh, it's a, the signal's inverted. So when the envelope goes up, the amount goes towards dry. So you'll hear the little percussive part of the sound with less reverb on it and then as it decays away. So it's kind of like sidechain ducking.
It sounded better earlier. I think I messed it up a little bit. That happens. I should have saved it. I'll, I'll get back to it. Yes, lush interpolation. The name of the synth is vital. Um, going back to Stuart's question about vo constant vocal note. I mean, you're talking about a drone. It's just going to be trial and error whether you, you know, find a vocal that fits. All right. I'm going to tweak this a little bit. You guys think about questions. You can see today was kind of like more of a hangout and uh, exploration, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to listen to this. You guys think of stuff to ask, or if you have, in our last 10 minutes, if I could pull it off, if you have an idea for a sound to add, you know, we'll see. We're running out of time. But, uh, oh, wrong plugin. This is my kick. I'm going to dial this back. That's better. Back in the pocket, I think. I should be recording this. This sounds good. It's all you need, right? Some delayed effect stab. William Mindreader says, it is worth mentioning the premium version is only 80 euro. So yeah, even... Even if you want to pay for it, it is not exorbitant. It is a good price for a really good synthesizer. I like it. This is, this is literally the second time I've used it. I looked at it once before the show just to make sure I knew where to go with it and start this sketch. And then this is the second time I'm ever actually doing anything with it. Right in front of you guys. So tightrope walking, as it were. And um, let's see. I can't believe I've I've stretched this one little thing out for almost an hour. Uh, let's try loading up another one and see what happens. No promises, because we're, we're we're running down the clock now. But uh, time to put this in my favorites. Actually, you know what? Be I, I know I'm not going to get to a really awesome place in a few minutes. Let's just check out some of the presets. I mean, this is just what comes with it as in the free version and see if there's anything interesting. I'm sure there will be. And it'll give, give you, some of you guys some, an idea of what else it can do. All right.
Nice. Yeah, and you hear a sound like that, and you're like, how did they do that? It's just, it's, you know, creative modulation. And there's a lot going on in here. You can see this uh, LFO3. It's great with the visuals, right? Where you can see, what's that fast, glitchy thing going on? You can see LFO's the one that's jumping around like crazy. And LFO3 is being randomized. So we have these random modulators, which will make it faster and slower randomly, and that's what's giving it that glitch. All right, I like that. That's a nice preset. That is giving us a little more of a detailed, uh, it sounds almost acoustic, right? I, that wavetable has, this exciter wavetable has kind of a pluckiness to it. It sort of sounds like a plucked string shape. That's very interesting. So you can organize by general sort of group, bass, lead, keys, etc. You can also organize by the name of the person who made the preset or the group of presets that it's in. I've noticed there's a little bit of an error that happens sometimes. I'll like I'll I'll filter the presets and then I can't go back. Like it uh it I think there's something they need to fix with how the 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 browser, the preset browser works, but Looks like we've had our winner announced. Congrats to Martin Salvador Privitera. You have won a $200 Ableton voucher. If you need to, uh, you know, once you, once you apply that to your Ableton Live 11 purchase or upgrade and you need some help <laughs> with using it, think of us. That's why we're here. We're here to share knowledge. Um, and we do these free streams almost every day. We do events, we do sample challenges. Uh, you can find out about things like that by joining our Discord. If you wanna know more about the school, check out our website. The links are below, of course. And um, yeah, congratulations again. Let's listen to a couple more sounds. There's some really complex sounding stuff in here, like one note, one note uh, songs. Yeah, I, I was curious to see what Mr. Bill came up with for some of these sounds. This, I like this super nice pluck. That's really beautiful. Sort of a different style than what we're doing, but I just thought this was a clever preset. And it, it shows you kind of, again, how the modulation and the creativity that you, you are able to kind of eke out with, with how the sounds are shaped. And this was a really cool idea. So he's got this guitar kind of loop happening in the sampler and it's randomized. So every time you hit a note, you're hearing a different part of the sample. And sometimes it's loud and sometimes it's quiet and sometimes it has different notes in it, right? And it's not pitch tracking, right? So you can see this keyboard icon is off. So you can play up and down the keyboard and you're triggering the same sample, but the sample's not changing pitch. But what is changing pitch is, you know, oscillator two. Let's turn off the sample and just listen to oscillator two. It's like this cavernous bass pluck with, you know, it's got this reverb on this bass pluck. So that you're playing a melody with that underneath this sample that's not changing. And, you know, on the other side of this, like the reverb and the effects really make it. Like, that's nice, but it sounds dinky. Pretty. But then multiband compression to squash the heck out of it. 
some distortion to make it crunchy to clip it a little bit and bring it together and then your cavernous reverb the sound quality of this plugin is really good okay William mind reader says I like the lock keys on the keybed use with the ARP that yeah sure and a lot, you can do this with a lot of mono synths that have multiple oscillators you can have some oscillators key tracking and some oscillators not key tracking. Um, I actually thought about you know going back to, to to my sound real quick. That was one of my initial ideas with this. I wanted to have the bass layer just as a drone, like not playing the melody. And I was like, all right, where's the key tracking for the oscillator? It's not on the front. You have to go into the advanced section and you can turn off note tracking. And so now, now that oscillator is playing one note. And to make it work with oscillator one, I would just transpose it until it sounds like it's in the right key. And so now I've got even more droney hypnotic vibe because the bass layer is not going up and down with the melody and it makes it sound like two different musical parts so i think that's kind of what what william minders were getting at that's the kind of thing you can do with with, with the art as well twist the knob sounds good stick an lfo on it exactly that goes without you know whenever you're tweaking a, a sound if you move a knob and it sounds cool think about how you want it to move and okay, stick an LFO on it if you want it to go the same shape over and over again, right? Stick an envelope on it if you wanted to hap it per key press. Now, of course, there are more complex modulations to consider. And these LFOs, like a lot of modern, more powerful modern synths, the LFOs are not just LFOs. You know, in trigger mode, they're going to restart every time you play a key, and that kind of makes it act like an envelope because it's always going to start at the same phase position, which you can set here. Sync is going to be, you know, when the frequent, when, when this is set to, uh, come on, tempo, it's going to follow the beat. If it's seconds, then it's just going to be free running. And that's how I've been using it. But you can also use all these LFOs as envelopes and create really complex envelope shapes. There's a bunch of presets for those. And there's a grid. All right. Let's do this. It'll be my last thing before we sign off. So I've got this oscillator not following the key tracking. What if I wanted to play a different melody? All right. I can actually go in here and draw in steps. And the LFO is synced to bars. This is going to be weird at first. It's not going to sound right. But let's just go in and modulate with that LFO. Oh, trigger needs to be off so that it goes through. All right. That's the tempo. Let's modulate the... Oh, that's already a new track. <laughs> I'm going to take that same LFO and do uh, the filter frequency. Another happy accident. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And, all right. Whoa. I can transpose snap the, the pitch modulation so that it fits in a scale. So it's not going to be random. Or not random, but it's going to be in tune. So I could pick notes of a scale that I want it to be on 
And then whatever those steps are, whatever in, in the LFO, they don't have to be perfectly tuned. This is going to quantize, so to speak, the, the pitch modulation to fit the chromatic scale. All right, I'm getting out into the weeds. Um, the, if again, if you're working with hardware or step external hardware sequencers or modular synthesis, where you're you're really counting on your step sequencing and your modulation to do musical changes, this this won't be new to you. But if you're just getting into making sounds with plugins, it isn't as sort of intuitive. And uh, this is definitely like thinking about your modulators as a, a part of the musical element is really important. So that's another nice example. And, um, you know, I've got a whole new melody. It's not going to fit with this. I would have to spend some time to fix it so it's in tune. Right? It sounds all kind of goofy and happy now. I need to get serious and play some minor intervals or something. But my, uh, this was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed my kind of wandering exploration of uh, a vital for the first time. And uh, again, congratulations to our winner. Thanks for being here to all the regulars in the chat. I'm really glad you guys keep coming back. And um, definitely come back next week when we have Techno Friends with Radioactive Man. In actuality, Keith Tenniswood. Definitely really psyched to have him on the show. So looking forward to that. And... Uh, Let's say goodbye to the chat. See you later, William. Mystic Moth, Lies Society, Martin Crockett, Travarsi, Cosmic J, Kai Struckel, Tori, Simple Sam. Glad you enjoyed it. And uh, enjoy your week. See you next time.